What's up guys, Matt here with Chaos Art. I'm here today to continue off of my last video, which is the After Effects Part 5 tutorial. Um, what I will be teaching you in this one is continuing with the background to be able to create the blue particle effect background. And uh, just like we did the orange one, I've kind of already went ahead a little bit. But uh, exactly like we did the orange one, if you don't know how to do it, go back, watch the last video. I'll put a link in there right about now. And uh, so go back, watch that, download the particle backgrounds. They're freaking awesome, totally free. Um, I do not own the rights to them. They were a free download from me, and I'm just passing them off to you. So I am the middleman. I'm not claiming that they are uh, of ownership of mine. But uh, let's go ahead and get the, the copyright stuff done with, you know. But um, as you can see here, I already have two files, and what I did is I just duplicated this top file right here. I just did Command D, that's Control D on Mac or uh, Windows, and uh, so what I did is just duplicated that. I dropped this one, the top one, back to 15 frames or 15 seconds. You can zoom in down here in the bottom and see that. Let's, there we go. You can see it's right here on 15 seconds, and uh, so and then I moved this bottom one forward to right before 15 seconds and zoom in a little bit more you can tell that it's 20 frames back I prefer to do a 20 frame fade uh, what we're going to be doing is fading one in and fading one out so there's different ways that you can do it um, I prefer to do it manually I think it's a little bit faster a little bit easier because you're doing it yourself and uh, you know something is going wrong and why it's going wrong because you did it but uh, you can always use the effects and presets up here just have been fade in and you can see fade in, fade out, and different things like that. Fade in frames, fade out frames. Definitely very useful, but uh, personally, I just like to do it myself. It's a lot quicker and a lot easier. So, what you're going to want to do is select both of your layers. I just held down shift and selected my bottom layer while the top one was already selected. And uh, press T on your keyboard. And as you can see, that brings up a little menu. Let's turn this off. It should look exactly like this whenever you get on it. So if it doesn't, you might have pressed the wrong hotkey, that's okay, just press it again. and uh, Or you can just click this arrow over here and it'll minimize it. You may have gotten something like this and you're just like, oh my god, don't freak out. Just close it, select it, and press T. T is the hotkey for opacity, obviously. And uh, so what we're going to be doing <clears throat> is starting at the beginning of the bottom layer. And uh, this is right here on the 20 frames. You can make this fade longer or shorter if you prefer. Um, I like mine just at 20 frames. It seems to work really well. Um, well, actually, it's a 10 frame fade, excuse me. But uh, 20 frame fades are also very nice. But uh, definitely, definitely something I highly recommend. Uh, it's what I use for all of my fades in my videos. So if you can see it fading from like the intro to the video, that is a 10 frame fade. So I want to go ahead and start by clicking this little keyframe stopwatch looking button right here next to opacity. And what that'll do is automatically create a keyframe right here at 100% opacity. I want to do the same thing for the top one. And uh, so what you're going to want to do is fade it from 100 to 0 and 0 to 100. This sounds kind of confusing, but once you see it done and you do it yourself a couple times, you'll really catch the uh, you'll get the idea of it. So. What you want to do is start off with the top layer, and it is already at 100% opacity, so everything behind this is at 100%. And at the very end, you want to do another keyframe by clicking this little diamond right here, and going up to the 100, clicking that, and taking your mouse to the left until it goes all the way to zero. So what that is doing is taking this, everything behind it, from 100%, still 100 and now it's starting to go down. You can see it over there. Now it's at 30, and it just fades away into the uh, to the blue. So, and then you want to do the opposite for the bottom layer. It should be at 0% opacity, and go to 100% opacity. So it's the complete opposite of the top one. And whenever you get that figured out and you're done, just press T again to close them. And uh, let's preview this and see what happens. And a nice little quick fade right there. Go back and watch it one more time since it's a little bit better rendered. Works good. You can always make it shorter or longer. I'm just going to leave mine at 10 frames at the moment just, you know, for tutorial purposes. So now that we have this, our background is complete. And a little bit of preview of my blue background. This is what mine ended up looking like right here. Here's a good view of it. 
I try to do it a little bit darker because the blue is very overpowering. So uh, just having very bright whitish blue particles with a very dark background. The orange had a little bit more of like an orangish background to it, which is fine. You can do it however you please, but uh, just for me, I prefer to have a little bit of a darker, darker side to it. Now that we have our background completely done, you're going to go to Composition, New Composition, and rename this one Text. I've seen a lot of people do these all inside of one composition. That is totally fine if you don't like breaking them up into many compositions. Um, really, just for, I'm getting another monitor, so I'll be doing two monitors on mine, which will be totally awesome because you'll be able to do it all in one composition. You'll have a whole screen for it. But uh, for for me now, and possibly for yourselves, if you're running on one screen, it's a lot better to break it up into multiple compositions uh, and put all the effects containing or within that one composition and like with each other but like it just it to me it really organizes it and I really hope that it helps you guys out too but now that we're within our uh, text composition here you're gonna want to go to uh, layer layer new and text and what this does is created a new text layer and it selected your text tool up here at the very top which is command T or control T and I just want to click. And my computer is being slow because I am recording. But uh, I see what happened. My After Effects is very weird, and the center of my text is not where the center should be. But I'm going to name this one All oh, Caps Fire. And yours should have been more centered in the center of the page, and mine isn't. Um, the text that I'm using right now is uh, Lethos Pro, and you can change your text by highlighting it and going over to Character and choosing it from the list. You can also, oh, there we go. You can also um, change it with the regular or black, which would be bolded. Your text color, and then text size, separation, all these different effects, and then you have paragraph, which aligns it on whichever side you would please. <clears throat> But for now, mine's already set up how I want it. And I'm just going to bring up Tile Action Safe. Come on, Tile Action. There we go. And try to center this up the best that I possibly can. Let's move that over. There we go. Now mine is perfectly in line with the center. And uh, go ahead and take off Tile Action Safe. No need to have it on any longer. So now that we have the text fire here, what you are going to want to do is give it the nice ramp that you decide to choose to go with your background. When I think of fire, I think of bright oranges and bright reds and yellows and things like that. So I'm going to go over to effects and presets and do ramp. And drag it over to my fire. But this looks nothing like fire. It's a gray to white or black to white. It's very not fire at all. It looks like charcoal. It's horrible. So I'm going to start off by changing my start of ramp with this little crosshair looking icon. I'm going to bring it closer to the top of my text and bring this bottom one closer to the bottom of my text. There we go. And now I can change my colors because it will be a lot closer and it will be a lot harder gradient. So I'll start off with black. I'm going to make this one a, see what we can do with red. Maybe a red to a uh, yellow maybe? Or get red to orange. What does that look like? Ooh, that looks good. So I got lucky and did it first time, but definitely mess around with it. And you could always switch them and see however it, however you like it the most. But uh, so I have my fire text done here, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the ice text and check in with the next tutorial to figure out how to do the fade in or the uh, effect in and effect out of each one of the text layers. But um, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to duplicate this, Command-D, just because it's in the right position and it already has the effects on it that I want. And I'm turn off my bottom layer. And this one's named Fire 2, but I don't want it to be named Fire 2. The way that you edit the names of file, <clears throat> or names of uh, layers with After Effects is by having it selected and pressing Enter. And that takes you into your menu where you can edit the name. I'm going to name this Ice. There we go. And press enter again to save it. So now that it is named ice, I'm going to go to my text tool up here, select it, and name it ice. 
but that looks nothing like ice. That is bright orange and bright red. That is not right. <clears throat> but I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. I'm going to center this one up. There we go. And now you can change the colors of it. Since you already have a ramp on it, you don't need to go back to your effects and presets and change it. Let's do a nice blue. It's like a, a whitish blue. Ah, there we go. It's looking good now. So now you have your fire layer and you have your ice layer. And they're both right here. But for now, I'm just going to end the tutorial here, guys. Thank you for watching. Let me know if this really helped you out. Um, next tutorial, you're going to be learning about how to do the, the uh, I guess, card wipe is what you would call it, in and out uh, for the text layer. So it kind of looks like they're folding into each other with the background changing at the same time. But uh, once again, thank you for watching and thank you for all your support, guys.